Um, so as I said, guys, uh, next weekend there is no class, uh, but you can you can keep in touch with me, uh, drop a message, uh, book a call during the week, um, as you know I can I can definitely help. All right, so that's with that. Let me start with. Um, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Is there gonna be a break on Christmas? Uh, that is something I have not really decided. Um, if everyone if everyone wants to take a break, I have no problem to give a break. You know, we have to just decide that uh, in a group. Um, okay. So, okay. so uh, which 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 time frame you're looking for exactly? It's um, I think. Let me let me check the calendar. Yeah, I'm just displaying my calendar over here in the screen. If you can see. Um, Saturday the twenty sixth of December. Okay. Okay, I can I can have no problem with that, if everybody uh, is happy. Okay. Guys, if everybody's happy with that, just just drop me a yes or no. Okay. Okay. Is Boxing Day? I don't know. It's Boxing Day twenty sixth. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Then. All right. Okay. I have no problem. I can I can give the uh, break there. Good stuff. Okay. Thank you. No okay. problem. Just to make sure, is it just for one day, twenty six? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's just twenty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So now, with that in mind, let's try to start the class, and. Um, we are in week four. Okay, week four. Okay, I remember last week um, we were discussing mostly on the um, constructors and runtime polymorphism and those kind of things. And then I didn't really get much time to talk about absolute XPath and relative XPath. You can see that in the week four, I have mostly spoken about XPaths and, and locator strategies, which is very, very important for, for, for us to understand. So I will, I will go back to it again, and I will start the class from this particular video or this particular uh, slide deck, and then I'll, I'll go to the week four as well, okay? Uh, Suhasini, you're able to hear me now, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good, good. So with that, um, Let's see what we have. <clears throat> okay. So web driver, look at the strategies. What is XPath? Absolute and relative XPath. Finding a web element using XPath is what we are going to talk about. That's cool. So what exactly is look at the strategies? Well, Selenium web driver is giving us multiple different options in order to interact with a particular component in the web page okay these are called locator strategies and that's it okay there are different kind of locator strategies that are available but ideally we have to figure it out that which one of them is most reliable why most reliable is important because you don't want to always get back to the maintenance mode of your test case which means if a simple uh, if a simple change happens in the website and change keeps on happening because you are not the developer and you have no control how the developer thinks about changing the look and feel of the website or even if the look and feel is not changing, they are going to change some text or some uh, you know uh, tag in the in the web page and immediately you will see that your test case is not working anymore. So that is basically happening because of your poor strategy that you have used in order to create the locator. Locator is needed, obviously, as you have seen so far, that is to interact with any component in the page. You need to talk to the locator. You need to, you need to click on that locator so that uh, an action can be performed in that particular web page. That is how it works. So if that is the case, then uh, we have to figure it out. How can we ideally, you know, write 
a locator strategy that is maintainable for a longer time. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to see uh, a few locator strategies that are provided. The ones that are there in in uh, Selenium WebDriver. So it says the first one. It says uh, just a minute here. The first one it says find element by class name. Okay, what exactly it is? So I will I will take you to I will take you to the web page, right? I'm taking any web page example. Um, say Amazon or maybe rental cars, rental cars. Okay. All right. In this particular web page, if I just go to the Chrome console. That is this particular guy over here. If I'm going to the Chrome console, and if I try to inspect, I do try to inspect any any one of these guys, right? I'm trying to inspect. Now you can see something. You can see that there are. So by now you obviously understand the fact that these are these are components, these are your web elements, right? Input along with the type equals text. When I'm saying input, input is a tag and the type is an attribute. With the combination of an attribute and the tag, a web element is something that we can consider that it's there, all right? Now, attributes are not one. It can be many attributes that are tagged into a particular, you know, tag. Okay, so you can see type, type, text, ID, FTS pickup location, name, FTS pickup location, blah blah blah, and there are n number of there are n number of tags along with the uh, sorry there are n number of attributes along with the tag, what is, 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 is how this particular component is designed, right? Now, you will see at many cases, most of the cases, there is going to be a tag, or sorry, not tag, but an attribute called as class. You have to understand that when, when Selenium WebDriver is telling you that driver dot find element by class name, they are referring to this particular class name. Now you have to understand really whether this class name will really work out for me because your main motive is to find this particular input box uniquely in the page. You need to find this box uniquely in the page. Only then you are confident that you are um, your action on that particular element will really work out, right? It has to be uniquely found. That's cool. Now, class is so and so. Class, and then it has given the class name. Well, that's good. Good. The point is, is it that this class name is unique? Because as per the test case, we have to make sure that it is unique in the page. Now. From the application standpoint, is it unique? How can we judge that? If I just hit, hit Control F, if I just hit Control F in this particular section, I will see a small window over here at the bottom. Let me actually increase my font a little bit like this, okay? I hope you can see it better now. Uh, now, it is talking about a class name. What's the class name? This is a class name, right? It says UI Clyde C FTS input C B C input. That's the class name that is there. Now, is this class name unique in the page? How do I know that? I can easily know that by simply copying this and pasting it here. You see, it's not unique. You see, there is one of two. It means there are two elements that in this page that are having the same class name. In this case, it is even better. I mean, it's, it's better that it's two, but in, in, in most of the other cases, you will see uh, the same class name has been used over and over again. 
Okay. Now, this is not going to work as a unique identifier of this particular element, I mean, unique identifier for this particular element, so that you can use it in your test case. It will never be the case, right? So, which is why I am saying that working out with find element by class name is not going to work out for us, right? Similarly, stuff like find element, find element by link text, find element by partial link text, find element by name, find element by tag. That's, that's crazy, right? Find element by tag. No, it will never work. There are hundreds of, um, there are hundreds of, uh, you know, your, your element out there. Uh, um, this, 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 this thing is wrong here, you know? Uh, it is not a class, it's, it's a tag name, right? It should be input. Input is a tag or an anchor is a tag or, um, you know, your your uh, select is a tag, right? But class is an attribute. So I have, I have written this wrong, I have to fix that. But anyways, tag names are input, anchor, uh, select, okay, button. And these are tag names and there are going to be hundreds of those elements in the page. So which means obviously it is not unique in the page and your test case will never work if you use any of these locator strategies. It's same for this class name as well, okay? All those things I am putting it as red because for the same reason, you never know, find link element link by text. There could be another link in the page that is having the same, same text, right? And it, it is not something that you want to work with, right? Partial link text. Partial link text means if your te link text is something like this, sell on Amazon, Amazon, if that is the link text and you want to say partial link text, so you're just trying to say, you want to click on an element for which only the, only the uh, you know, first part of the string matches first part or something that talks like starts or ends or uh, contains the keyword called cell, right? For them, partial link text will work, but it could be hundreds of elements in the page that will have partial link text, um, I mean, uh, the, 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 the text as cell in their, in their uh, link text, right? There could be hundreds of them and it will not work. Now, I have a question for you. What do you think? will happen if is instance and attribute refers to the same or any difference of them? Okay, instance is from Java perspective. Attribute is from XPath perspective, Hema. I think you're confusing there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now, what I'm saying here is that uh, for example, okay, I, I have a question. Just, 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 just tell me what you think. So, for example, I have a input. I have an input tag. Input tag, and it has an attribute called class name equals I don't know, say ABC, ABC, right? And that's pretty much about it. That's an input I have in the top of the page. And somewhere in the middle of the page, you have another input, class equals ABC, ABC, comma, uh, say, what else, ID equals, ID is another attribute, talks about A, B, three, four, five. Okay, something like this. There are two components to um, web elements in this page. One is having the tag with an attribute. Another one is having tag with an attribute and the two attributes ideally. Now your, your, your locator strategy, your locator strategy is say for example, driver.findElement by class name. That is the locator strategy that you're using. So element by by class name 
by class and by class name, I think that is, yeah, by class name. And then here, you're gonna say, you're gonna say ABC. Now, obviously this XPath is, or this locator strategy is fine. It means it will definitely find an element in the page. It's not, it's not going to break out or it's not going to say that I have not found anything. It will definitely find, it will find, it will find two of these guys, right? It will find this one and this one, both of them, it will find it. The question is, from your understanding, what do you think, which one, if I say driver.find element by class name, and you say something like this, say dot click, dot click, right? From your understanding, what do you think, which one of these will be clicked? Yeah, it is going to, yes, it is going to have two of them for sure, but which one of them will be clicked? The first one. The first one, yeah. One. Why do you think it is like that? Because uh, it's only just defining the class name. Sorry, I didn't get it. one at a time, please. Ravi, you can go on. Okay, okay. so, so uh, it, uh, this is just defining, defining the class name, name and, and it's, 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 it's matching with that. that and the other the one other is the, the having the ID, the ID unless, unless we put the ID, the ID uh, by text text to define text so it will pick the second one. No. 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 <laughs> you mentioned in the video that whenever in uh, research and if we like, click more than one result, and if we hmm. don't mention which one to click, then by default it will take the topmost one. The topmost. Exactly. Why it is like that? Can someone tell me why it is like that? Because that's how Selenium works. It's not about that's how Selenium works. It's about when a web page is scanned. The web page is always scanned from exactly. The web page is always scanned from from this to this. Wait a minute, let me, from here to here. You understand? Diagonally from top to the bottom, to the top left to the bottom right. So obviously, when I am finding this element at the top of the page, this guy will be clicked. Make sense? All right, so this is basically where I'm saying that XPath is what we will be using in order to find an element because other strategies are something that will not work out, okay? Um, we are gonna talk about three things here. One is going to be uh, the ID, ID, find element by ID find element by XPath, which is what we will be learning mostly. And then there is something called a CSS selector as well, which also works similar to, a little bit similar to XPath, but it is not as advanced as XPath is, right? Okay, ID. When I'm talking about ID, at many times you will see that there are element in the page that is having an ID attribute. For example, the one that I have opened over here, the one that I have opened here, right? You can see it has an ID, it has an ID. It means if an element is having an ID, it means 99.99% cases will be the case where this ID is going to be unique in the page. That means there's not going to be any other element in the page that will have the same ID, that will have the same ID, right? So if, you have an element that has an ID without any hustle. You can directly use element by ID, use that ID and get along with it. No problem at all. But the challenge is every element in the page will not have an ID. That is not how it is designed, okay? You are a tester. You really cannot go back to your developer saying, dude, you have to add ID to everything. That's not how it's gonna work. You have to, you have to work it out with whatever is there right now. And uh, if, it, if an ID is available, then you can go with that. If it's, not a, if it's not there, then your best bet is XPath, right? Perfect. So that's where 
we are idly breaking our head on XPath, okay? Well, in XPath, there are two different, you know, types that we have to understand. One is an absolute XPath, absolute XPath, and other one is a relative XPath, okay? XPath. Um, let me scroll down a bit. What is XPath? I have probably uh, told you earlier as well. XPath is a structural navigation technique used in any structured document. Well, HTML is a structured document, so we can definitely use XPath in that without a problem. We can also use XPath in XML documents, right? So that's your uh, that's your uh, export thing, right? It it helps us to it's 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 a, it's a I mean it helps us to read a structured document, okay? But and it has it has some syntax and some methods. If you can follow it, you will be able to find you will be able to find uh, a component in the structured document much easily, okay? That's what export helps us with. So. XPath structure, okay? So you can understand that this is the HTML where we have two different components. One is a head, another one is a body. The structure that you are seeing right now is called as document object model, DOM, okay? Document object model. Why it is called as document object model? Because, you know, as I said, there are hundreds of developers, they can, wish to develop a page any way they wish to, right? Any day, any way they want. However, if a global standard is available in order for every developer to follow, then, you know, it is, it's going to be easier for anyone to really read and understand what's happening. That's the reason why every web page that you will open into this world will follow the same structure, which is called as document object model. And as per that, you have to start your web page with a HTML root, and then you need to keep two different sections. One is called as head, another one is called as body. As a part of the head, you have to add things like things like title. Okay, I have all, all already shown here. So things like title, and as uh, as well as along with title, you have to add in a few more things. For example, you have to add in you have to add in CSS, CSS location, okay? CSS location and JavaScript location, JS location. So guys, you have to understand one thing that when a web page is built, there are idly three components to the web page, okay? There are three components to any web page that you see. So a web page is built on obviously the HTML, the HTML that idly gives you the structure of the web page, which means it is a it is having some kind of a section over here. There are some there are some subsections. Okay, there are some subsections with some information. There is going to be a small button, right? Something like that. Okay, so this is this is basically. A structure is what you are creating. In order to create a structure, you will use your core component, which is HTML. That's obviously fine. To make that web page look good, the coloring, the styling, and everything, that happens through something called as CSS or cascading, cascading style sheet. Right? It's cascading style sheet. And finally, you have another one, which is JavaScript, JS, JavaScript, because every button that you are, you are, you are adding there, uh, every input box that you're adding there, it has to perform some action. When you click on a button, it has to do something, right? That is where JavaScript is in place so that whenever there is when whenever there's a click, something is happening in the background. I will talk you through more about it when we go to the advanced classes that how exactly 
a JavaScript is being fired and when something is being fired, what is happening in the background? We will talk about that in details after a month or so. But this is what, these are three components that are there as a part of any web page, any web page, you will see this. So in the header section, in the head section of the HTML page, we will be adding the location of the CSS files and the JavaScript files. For example, I can show you um, in here, uh, if I open, if I go to this guy, Okay, so you have a HTML, you have a head, you have a body, as I told you, that's the structure that is followed globally. If I go to the head, there is a title. Title is nothing but when you hover on top of your, of, of your um, browser tab, you see this particular title popping up, right? Cheap car hire, compare rental prices, rentalcars.com, that's the title, right? So that's the title that is there. Along with that, there are different kind of CSS links, for example, if I go down a little bit, um, it should be there. Property. They've added some meta links. Uh, that's fine. Here is the style. In the style, what they have done is they have added some CSS already in the page, okay? But along with that, I'm pretty sure that it is just not there, but there must be another CSS file or something like that. So these are all, all JavaScript files, you can see, .js files. This .js files are the ones which are actually making this page active, you know? So that is basically the JavaScript files. And there has to be a CSS file I'm looking for. Style, yeah, they have added another style over here, but there should be a .css file somewhere. I have to look through again. But anyways, that's how things are added in the web page. CSS, JavaScript, and HTML is what is needed in order to in order to write, create a web page that will work out always. Okay, so that's the that's the scenario there. Okay, now. Along with the head, we have another section called as body. In the body, there are all these components, okay? The buttons, the uh, input boxes, the radio buttons, the, uh, you know, select tags or the drop down elements, everything, anchor, links, whatever it is, they're all coming in the body. However, I told you uh, yesterday, I mean, last week, that is, in order to make everything in the web page organized, the developer will create a structure, something like this. A structure, something like this. You can see there is going to be multiple sections in the page. These sections are something we call it as divs or divisions. There can be a section within a section, okay? Something that is totally controllable by the developer. A sections within a sections is highly possible. And then they can have, even they can have, if they wish to, they can even have a um, table. They can even have a table, something like this, okay? In the table, they can create few columns like so, few columns like so, and few structures like this. And in this layout, only then, only then it becomes an organized structure. I'm talking about a web page, you see everything is laid out properly. And that happens only in a situation where things are properly organized with the help of tables, with the help of divisions, okay? So, for example, when I'm talking in terms of absolute XPath, okay, this is the, uh, this is the uh, XPath structure, right? So let me actually go down a little bit and I will talk about XPath type, absolute XPath, right? I will do one thing. So as I said here, 
Absolute XPath, it is a direct way to find an element, but the disadvantage of absolute XPath is that if there are any changes made in the path of the element, then that XPath gets failed. That is what absolute XPath means. Uh, I, will, I will give you a demo. For example, let me open up my paint and <clears throat> Okay, so this is the web page I was talking about, right? Okay, so now I will quickly do one thing. I will go to the rentalcars.com and the element that we have there, the element, for example, the search button, right? So as I said, we will be creating an XPath, right? This is a search button that I have, okay? Ideally, the search text is within a tag called a span. Span is needed to hold a text, right? A single line of text, okay? Uh, that's why the span is needed. So anyways, the span, and you see the value is search, that is the exact value that you see in the button, right? And if you just go one level up, you see everything in, everything in XPath is structured. You see, I have a button. Within the button, I have span right? You only need to click on this particular button. If I want to click on this particular button, the X path that, that will be given to you by Chrome, uh, I mean, this is, this, this is, in this case, it's going to be easier because, in this case, it's going to be easier because the button is having an ID. However, not every case you will see an ID. Not every case you will see an ID, and that's where the challenge comes. So for example, if I just try to see the XPath that is given to you by Chrome itself, it is something like this. You can say copy, you can say full XPath, okay? I'm just saying full XPath for now. And then let me go back to my, not here, the paint. Okay, I'm here, and now, I will quickly say how exactly this button is looking like. This is the direct structure to the button. You know what, I will just write it down one more time. Okay. This is a direct structure to the button, but let me try to put it in the right order. In, 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 in that, that means, you know, I just want, I just want to put them in the, right layer. So div, div2, and I will explain you what exactly is happening so that you understand why am I saying that absolute expert is, is a risky business there. Okay. Div, div1, Div form, and finally I have a button. This is the structure, right? When I'm saying about absolute XPath and I'm saying that I want to click on this button, ideally that's how your absolute XPath is formed from top to bottom, one layer at a time. It has gone. Uh, it has. It has uh, figured out that okay. After body, there is a div two. After div two, there is another div two, and so on and so forth. And then finally, I have a button. Now the point is, guys. As I said, there are multiple divs in the page, and you have no control on that, right? So when I'm saying div of two, what does it mean? It means that in this after body, there could be multiple divs after body. So after the body tag, after the body tag over here. Uh, so we have HTML to start with. We have head, uh, head and bodies in the same layer, right? In the, in the same level. So head, and then we have body. So after the body, we can have multiple divs. 
you have no control on that as a tester multiple divs and these divs are in the same layer or same level okay now think about it html then head and body they are in the same level and then there are multiple divs i'm saying there are three divs now so which means the guy which is over here that is the div number one div number two and div number three so from this respect i'm talking about the div number two over here right from this particular xpath perspective i'm saying it is the div number two div in square bracket two means div index number two right again after div index number two there is another pool of divs and in that there is again a second div okay again in one level down there are another pool of divs and then there are three divs and you're saying the third index and then there is one div inside that and then there are another one div inside that and then so and so forth you keep on going 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 until you hit the button and this button is the element that you would really want to work with now when i'm saying that X, absolute xpath is absolutely not going to work because of the reason that you really don't have any control on it which means if you are using this xpath in your test case and your test case is running for today, tomorrow, after a week or so, you suddenly seeing that your test case are going to fail. And why that failure will happen is because of the fact that there could be a change, a very, very minor change that has no impact in the UI. The UI will still look the same. And the developer just thought, instead of putting, instead of keeping, or instead of having three divs over here, let me add another div just above this particular div. So they are thinking of adding another div just above this particular div. And if they do it for this particular situation, if they do it, immediately your XPath will fail because that div, the new div is now considered as a third div and your div that was third div earlier is now the fourth div. Is this making sense to everyone? This is really, really important to understand that why we don't want to work with absolute XPath. Is it making sense to everyone, whatever I just said? Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. So if that is the situation, then your test case will definitely fail and you will spend a huge amount of time in fixing your test cases if you are relying on absolute x path okay many times what a uh, lot of people who you know get into automation or who start their career in automation they try to just quickly go to the uh, you know quickly go to the website like i did okay for example let me try and find out the x path of this particular element this particular checkbox Okay, this is a checkbox label class. Uh, I think the checkbox is that is a label. Okay, this is the input. This is the input. Uh, it has an ID. I'm looking for something which is not having an ID, uh, and then it will be easier for me to really show you. Let me see this guy can book with a phone. Okay. I said div. If I click on this, yeah, right? It has no ID. I want to click on this particular element, okay? This div is what the what the element is, and I want to I want to work it. Or I want to work with this guy, this div ideally, okay? If I want to get, uh, I mean, a lot of people will do this, right? They will simply come in here, right click on it, right click on it, and say copy and say copy xpath this xpath is something that is given to you by chrome console itself okay there are a few add-ons available as well you can use them but ideally they are going to always give you something that is you know having a portion of absolute xpath attached to it if i just say copy xpath like this and if i go back to my uh, 
and let me see what it found for me. So you see, it is having a portion. See, yes, last time when I copied, I copied full XML. That's why we got that long. Now it is a little bit better, but still it's not as good. Why? Shavik, your voice is breaking. Is it for everyone? Uh, yeah. It's yeah. not like it's breaking with just uh, yeah. like low volume. <laughs> it's like you're far away. Yeah, yeah, like you're far away. Now I can't hear anything. Um. Yeah, we, we, we can't hear you at all now. Okay, am I audible now? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Good. Um, just a minute. Idly, I will go back to the paint. Yeah. So when I when I copied the last string in Chrome, there are two options, right? In all the browser, you will find a similar kind of a structure. Uh, you will see either copy copy full export, full export, or you will say copy export, okay? In both the situation, Chrome is idly finding out the export for you. You can even buy, you can even not buy, but you can find a free add-on in Chrome and Firefox, who will be getting you the export, but the export will be obviously not something that you have any control on. It is kind of a combination of absolute export and relative export, like like the example that I'm showing you. What what they have done is this automated automated um, export that I got right now from Chrome. It is it is showing me something like this. It shows double star dub, double slash star. ID equals contact us. What exactly it means? It means that give me an element, the first portion I'm talking about, right? First portion, first portion. So it means that give me, give me any element, think about it. Give me any element in the page, in the page, that has has an ID equals contact us, contact us, right? Contacts dash us. That is exactly what it means. It means give me any element. Why, how, how did it say any element? It said any element with the star. You saw, you see? Double slash star means give me any element in the page that is having an ID called contact us. So that is how it found some div named as contact us or something else, something like that. I don't know what exactly it is, but it is having an ID called contact us. That's fine. After that, immediately, it starts with the second portion. That is, there could be multiple divs, as I said earlier, in the same level. In that, it is it is pointing out to the first one, the first one. And then from that first one, it is saying, I want to go one level down, which is going to be a span. And then it is going to be a div again. And that's then my, my ideal div or my you know perfect div that I want to really work with, right? This is how XPath, this is how a Chrome browser or any other browser will give you a XPath. And that is a problem. Because you see, today I have a div number one. Again, the same logic comes in. If another div gets added above it, this becomes number two and your test case will fail because that is not where your element is located. So that's how you should not take the help of Chrome browser to give you 
uh, auto-generated XPath because that is not reliable. You don't want to get into a situation where you're maintaining, you're spending time in, over the whole day in just maintaining your locators. That is a terrible, terrible mistake you will be doing. That is what I was trying to say. Now, if if I if I don't have absolute XPath in place, then what's what do I have? I have, okay. yeah, yeah. Tell me. So, wait, uh, so uh, whatever you have mentioned now, if we copy it from Chrome, yeah. and uh, if developer makes any changes like div three, what you have given example, yeah, then yeah. it will be an error for absolute XPath. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, so, exactly. Uh, even when we mention normal XPath, like the way you have taught us. If developer makes any changes in that, then also there will be a problem. Or not? No, no, it will not be a problem because the the way you are writing your XPath with the help of relative XPath, mm -hmm. minor changes in the in the page will never break your test case. Okay. If there is a major major change, only then things okay. can break. And I can okay. tell you, I can I can show you how it is, okay. right? So here you understand that here, ideally. You are telling, uh, you know, you're, you're, you, with the help of the absolute expert, you are actually searching one step at a time or one component at a time from top left to the right bottom, one by one by one, and then finding the element. On the other hand, when I'm saying that that is how absolute expert works, that this is the absolute expert, right? So you are basically searching absolute expert, right? where we are searching searching one component at a time. Uh, one, I mean, not searching, but searching one one by one, like I'm going, going one level at a time, searching one level at a time. And then I'm, I'm just, just traversing from, from, from top to bottom, from top left, left to bottom right correct that's exactly what we were where, what we, we have seen as a part of the absolute expert on the other hand when i'm talking about relative expert we are absolutely not dependent on absolute expert and what i am saying with relative expert is try to look look for the element element directly directly in the page in the page which means it's a it's a global search global search global search in the whole page you are you are you're not you're not you're not you're not going one level at a time you're not you're not traversing one level at a time rather you are just starting to search over the whole page like you will you will search in google right the way you search it in google you just go like you know you just you just perform a you just give a search text and you just you just uh, fire the query and it gives you back with hundreds of results right so it's something like that. You're searching over the whole page and you're just trying to find out the element directly. You're not traversing one step at a time and then finding the element. You're performing a search directly in the whole page. That is the difference between relative XPath and absolute XPath. And I will show you how it is done. So for example, for example, um, let me actually go back to my, oh, I did close the window. Just hold on. Let me open up my class. Uh -uh.
Okay, so in here, if I go ahead and go in, so I'm talking about relative XPath. I'm saying relative XPath search starts from the middle of the HTML DOM. It starts with double forward slash, which means it can start the search of the element from anywhere in the web page. Hence, there is no need to write long XPath. Okay, for example, the one that I have given over here, let me explain what I'm trying to say. For example, if I just go back to my rental cards again, rental cards again, and that's the web page, perfectly fine. I was talking about this particular element. Let me inspect it. So that's my element over here. Idly. Not that, sorry, not this guy, uh, this guy, right? Because there is no ID over here. So this is my element. This is my element right here called as something, right? Perfectly fine. I want to perform a click on this element. The element, ideally I want to click on this, this particular div or if I want to go a little bit down yeah, on the on the on the first div, you see there is there is one div over here that is my target div, this guy, the one that is showing me hold in green. I can click on that, or even I can go one level down to this div, the one that is the arrow, right? I can even perform a click on that. That's an image, perfect, perfectly fine. Yeah, it's saying some some icon, some span, blah blah blah, and I can click on the SVG, which is nothing but the arrow down or basically it's using um, uh, image of arrow down, that's fine. I want to click on this, that's okay. What I will do is I'll do a control F that is, let me increase the size. Okay, now as a part of this, what I will do is I will first try to find out this particular element, okay? And then I, from there I can, I can go on. So it says div class, CB something, I don't want to use a class. I can probably directly use this contact us main trigger or I can even go further down. And this is my element ideally, right? I can I can even try to find this out. So let me just say something like this. I'll say dot, dot means start the search from the root of the page, double slash, Okay, and then I'm saying I'm looking for a div that is having an attribute called as data test. Okay, now I'll copy this value. I'll copy this value. I'll say div, inside the div, I'm looking for an attribute at data test, data test. Okay, equals within quote, I'm giving this guy. You see that? Immediately, if I am able to provide this information, I am able to find the element uniquely in the page. Perfect. This, this guy is the guy that I really want to click on. If, if I want to go one level down and find out, I want to find out, suppose I want to click on the span, okay? I want to click on this pan. I have no, I have no intention to go to span one level at a time. I can do this, right? I can do this. I can say div because there is a div right there. You see, that's my second div. As soon as I'm saying I'm putting the div, this guy is getting highlighted. Again, I can say div, right? That's my, that's my one level down again. Again, I can say div. You see, I can do it. And then I can say span. I can say span, right? Span is the span is the guy which is that arrow, right? I want to click on the span. I can I can go one level down at a time with a single slash div, one level at a time. I can do that. Or I can be smart. I don't want to do anything like that. I can just say directly a double slash. That's it. You see, I am directly from from this guy to the span. I'm just jumping, 
and I am able to finding I'm able to find out the targeted span just with my double slash. With the double slash, what is happening here is whatever is here in between, let me draw, whatever is here in between here and here, I am skipping them out. So if I'm skipping them out, then tomorrow, if developer thinks of adding another div over here, I am not bothering at all. As long as I am saying double slash, it means I am saying, give me a span that is under the div, which is this div, that's it. That is how relative XPath works. Anything that happens in between, I'm least bothered about it. And that's how your test case will be maintainable and will never break, at least in terms of your XPaths. Until unless there is a major change. For example, the guy has, the developer has thought of changing the span to not a span, but something, another tag altogether. They thought of you know, putting a button over there, then it will break. That's a major change, but not with these kind of simple changes, no. Am I making sense, guys? Everyone, yes, no? Yeah, yeah, sure, it's clear. Yes. Right, so that is exactly how it works, all right? So guys, I'm just going to take a quick little break for five minutes. Uh, you guys can take a break as well, and then I will continue from here on again. Thank you. Okay, so I was talking about relative XPath and I just said why and how it is a lifesaver. Now, in terms of relative XPath, it's just not that you just use double slash and you're done with relative XPath. Relative XPath comes with a lot of different um, you know, methods and different attributes to make your searching even more effective, right? And that is what we are going to learn right now. So let me quickly open up my stuff here. Okay, that was that, was that I covered in the week 10, I mean class 10. Now I will go to my class 11, okay? As a part of 11, what I have is XPath methods, difference between find elements and find elements, okay? Understanding find element, understanding find element, well, I, I have already explained that to you how it works. You're just trying to find an element in the page with the XPath that, that we have provided. You can say, you know, dot input class nav input, that is the class is the attribute. Input is the tag and you're giving an attribute value and you're saying that you're starting the search from the dot. That means the root, okay? And you're directly finding this element in the page. And all you do is driver.find element by XPath and you give the XPath and you are done, right? Now, at many cases in, 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 in some situations, you will see that even after, even after doing this, even after doing this, input class nav input, okay? You are seeing there are multiple results that are popping up. For example, let me see if I can create a similar situation. For example, this one over here, it's saying there is only one of one, but let me try to see if there is any other element. Um, maybe div class CBC card. I don't know if it is, if it is going to show multiple elements. So let's see, div class equals CBC element, CBC card. Yeah, perfect example. Look at this. I said div class CBC card. I'm just giving you an example to understand how to really, how to really work it out with relative XPath. And in a situation when you see one of three elements, how will you ideally figure out the right element that you're trying to work out with. You see, there are three elements, which means there are three elements in this page that exactly follows this category. I mean, this particular structure, which means, which means guys, you have to understand very clearly what I'm trying to say here. 
Here, the first element is having div class CBC card. There could be another element in the page that is exactly following something like this. It says div, and in the div, sorry, div is the div is the tag, obviously. Div is the tag, and then it could have a class called as CBC card, CBC card, C, sorry, CB, CB dash C card, okay? And there could be another attribute in that element, which is ID equals something blah, right? There's a possibility that there's another element in the page that is having the attribute called a CBC card as a, as a class attribute and another attribute called ID. There could be another element, another div, which is not an ID, but it could be something data test, data test, right? Something like that. These three guys are having class attribute value as CBC card as common. And if that is the situation, then what will happen? It will throw you one of three or one of N, right? However, as we have understood so far that we want to find an element uniquely in the page. So if you are getting into a similar situation, you can easily then make it unique with the help of indexing. How would you make it unique? You will do something like this. Let me clear out my drawing. Okay. Um, what it will do is, so this is the this is the one that you are right now seeing. So if I just if I just hover on this element, that is the element that is the one which I am concerned about. That is the element that I'm concerned about, which is having uh which is right now getting highlighted but there are uh, other elements so if, if i can say if i hit enter again over here if i hit enter again it takes me to another element in this case it is exactly matching like before but yeah you see the example just came to you div class cbc card and then there's another guy another attribute called data react root yeah so out of the three elements that is falling under a combination of div, tag, and class attribute, if I want to find the first element out of this, then what I can do is I can simply wrap this up in a bracket, okay? And use indexing, I'm saying in that bracket, get me the first element in that whole search, get me the first element and I can put that in a square bracket. And that's where it's now pointing to the right element, which is my target element. Okay, now I can go the same thing, right? So in this section, I want to click on the span. I want to click on the span. Can I directly say span? Obviously I can, but I have a problem again. When I said that, under the CBC card span, then I'm seeing multiple spans, one of six span. So if I'm getting one of six span, then I have to figure it out. How can I really find the span with this attribute class of blah, 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 right? What can I, what can I do with that? So I'll just copy this whole guy and I will make my search unique by adding a class equals this guy over here and that's it. That's where it found me the right span. You saw how am I, how am I taking different combination of attributes and tags and with the help of relative expert, how am I able to clear my problems and I'm able to find the element uniquely in their page, right? Just not with the span, you know, just not with the with 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 the help of double slash, but you also need to 
you need to practice this guys i mean this will only come through practice i mean there is no other way right so you have to take up not one web page or not one website i want you to practice expert in multiple different websites and that's where you will be able to face challenges and you will be able to solve them right i have given some um i've given some uh assignments that's there but on top of that this is what is needed you have to practice on your own so you see i said double slash span that gave me one of six so i have to find out the element which is this guy i i could i can i can either do this i can either do this the one that i did right now um, like this uh, wait a minute yeah i can either do this or i can even think of using the indexing so you see it is saying one of six so one two yeah it comes to the second index right so i can say two i'm um, sorry my bad let's wrap it up in the bracket and just say two right i can even do that whatever is um, not complex for you you can use that situation but always try to use expert methods and expert uh, relative expert situations to create your expert right okay is this understandable whatever i just did right now so with one thing we can directly go to the span and uh, like write it for the class right rather than this double slash mm -hmm. No, oh, you can do that. You can do that. I'm just trying to show you different ways of writing it. You you can you can directly say this, right? You can you can you can say, I'm looking for dot span, and uh, with this particular guy there. Where are you? Oh, it got refreshed. Hold on. That's the element. So I can directly say that I'm looking for this element in the whole page. If this element is unique, uh, the combination of the span and the attribute class, if it's unique, then you are saved. If it's not, that, then you have to figure this out. Yeah. In this case, it, it is absolutely working fine. So one of one is fine. And this will this will be a good solution, which will run for a longer time, right? This is what is absolute expert that's a rid of expert right now let's go back to the okay situation okay understanding find element i just said that find elements is basically a situation where you're finding multiple elements in the page for example for example i give you the other situation right i give a situation where Okay, so here I'm saying one of three. There are multiple elements that you are seeing, right? And you want to, for example, and just, just just presume that these are multiple different links in the page, and you want to click on every one of them. For example, something like that. Okay, so how can you do it? You can basically use the you, you can you can take the help of driver dot find elements method. The way I just showed you here, driver dot find elements method, find elements method by expat, and I have given a particular expat over here, okay, and that's where it is giving me all the elements in the page, okay, and then I am able to click on that link one by one by one. So you have to you have to understand. I I, I think I have covered about I've covered I've covered list in in one of my previous videos. So what exactly we are doing here is we are saying this. How can we say this? How can we say this? We can say this because driver dot web sorry find element find element okay and then you provide the X path here right? 
drive it or find element x path here, right? This find element method returns back a particular object, and that object is a web element, a single web element. Web element, give an object name called ELE, and that's it, right? So you can see driver dot find element by x path. This find element method is returning back one web element, and then you can say something like this: ELE dot click which will perform the click on that element. You can do that. On the other hand, what you can do is, I mean, when, when, when it needs, you can work it out with multiple web elements. Suppose your search is giving you multiple web elements and your test case demands that you need to work with multiple web elements. That's where you will use driver.findElements. So driver.findElements elements, it's, it's plural, right? And then you give the X path. And when you say it, then you are not only returning back one element, but you are returning back multiple web elements, obviously, because it's a find elements. So where do you hold them? This find elements is going to return back multiple web elements, but it should be hold somewhere, right? You should be able to hold it somewhere, right? So you're gonna say list of web element, list of web element and you're going to say the web element name is for example uh, elements elements something like that equals this now you see what i did i said driver dot find elements by x path this is going to return me back multiple web elements that is something that i'm storing within list of web element object that is where I'm storing it, right? So once I'm storing on in, into a list of web element, then I can work out with multiple web element at a time. So I am using a for each loop, and then I'm clicking on each and every link in the page with the help of driver.findElements. And that's how the find element works. Do you have any questions? Um, until find elements and or, or how it is working. Any doubt? Um, so Vic, I have one question. Um, Go on. So say, say for the example here um, that you have underneath where it's getting all of the um, elements with an A tag. Yeah. So is that element then, is that everything in the A tag, including the href and the name and the value is all stored within the one element? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So if you want to get the text, then you still have to get text for for each and every yeah. anchor. Exactly, yes. exactly, okay. exactly. So that's that's a good question. So, uh, for example, I have an anchor. Uh, let me see if I have an anchor. Yeah, I have an anchor. You see, this is an anchor. This is a list of anchors, right? Let us try to create a XPath out of it. Um, what I will do is I will quickly. I will, so this is, this is a whole section, right? And you will see this kind of section can only be created if someone is really creating a table or a division, right? You see each and every one of them is under one, one division is what I'm looking like, I mean, looking at. So let's see what exactly it says. Yeah, it is, it is a kind of similar, whatever I thought. So you see, this is what they have done. So they have created a div. You see, they have created two divs, yeah? top worldwide destination and top worldwide airport. You see, there are two divs, two containers. Or divs means container or divisions, whatever, right? So there are two containers, fine. Inside the two containers, they have one tag called as UL. UL means unordered list. Inside that unordered list, they have allies. Each and every allies are having an anchor tag. If I go inside this, each and every one of them are having an anchor tag. Let's write a test case, okay? Let's write a test case. Um, rentalcards.com. I want to really print all of them. Nothing much more than that. I will just print all of them. So let me create my, let me create my solution. Um, actually, I will do it here itself. 
uh, source new package summary and new class and I will say test rental cars main method um, I will quickly add my selenium binding yeah it is already there that's good I will then simply write few things um, let me copy Just a second, there has to be something here. Okay, where exactly is my Chrome driver? I don't know that yet. Let me look at it. Okay, that's that. And what I will do is I will say driver dot get, and I will just say, get me the rentalcars.com. So the URL is this guy. Okay, that's that. Now, once I'm in this page, then what will I do? I want to really work it out, sorry. I want to really work it out with all these. I want to print all of these values. That's, that's the only thing I want to do. That's fine. So I want to print all the values inside this whole section. Okay. Now you see there are two sections over here. One is the top worldwide destinations. Another one is top worldwide airports. So I want to create one XPAT or one XPAT in such a way that I can really target every element in the page. So if I just go one level up, to the UI layout that is idly giving me the whole, both of these guys, both of these two divs, right? If I go to the top of it, then that's apparent of these two divs. So it will give me all my elements under, under, underneath, right? What I will do now is I'll say div class UI layout. Let's see if I get only one element or multiple elements. So I'm getting 21 elements, perfect. That is so, so crazy. Um, let me, let me see, where do I find it out? Okay, I think the previous one. I'm missing it out. Um, or I can do one thing because I have too many, right? Let me try and figure this out in a different way. Instead of using the UI layout, let me see. Ah, I have this guy. Perfect. Div ID popular locations. I have this. That's good. I can do something like this. I can say div ID popular layouts, popular locations. Yeah. That's one of one, perfectly fine. Inside this, I have multiple, multiple divs. In both the divs, I have UL, you see, UL. Inside each and every UL, there are multiple LIs that are containing all the anchors, okay? So I can do something like this. I can say, give me all the LIs there are 20 of them, it says. I just said double slash li. It is giving me 20 of them. If I hit all of them, let me see if it covers all of them or it is taking more than that. No. Whatever I see, all the li's, they are the ones that I am targeting. So I'm good with that. So these are all the li's. Inside the li's, 
allies will not give me much information. The anchor will give me the information, right? So under the li, I have anchor, perfectly fine. And I will say slash a. So you see, I didn't go for double slash a. I just did single slash a, why? Because a is just below li. It's just a direct child of li, right? So I can say a slash a, and then that's my 20 anchors, good? I'll copy this, perfectly fine. I'll go back to my, go back to my test case. And here, all I'm gonna say is list of web element. Okay. And then I say destinations or, yeah, destinations. Popular locations, popular locations equals driver dot find elements by export export and as a part of that I'm going to say this and that's pretty much what I want to do. I have some error because these two elements are not imported into the class so I will have to import it. Just hover on top of it and say import web element and that will import the web element like this. And then list will also do the same thing. Use Java util, not Java AWT. Use Java util. And that imports the Java util package into the class, right? That's done. Once I have this in place, then what I will do, I will simply use a for each loop. How can I do a for each loop? I say for. So this is basically a list of web elements. So at every iteration, it will be iterating on a list of web elements. So at every iteration, you will get one web element, which means you can say web element, web element, and you can say location, okay? And colon, and then say popular locations. That's it. That's it. Once I have this in place, all you need to do is pass this out. Within the sysout, what I do is location because that's a web element. Because this is a web element, right? If it's a web element, then I will obviously get the get all the methods that a web element supports. So which means I will say location location dot. As soon as you say dot, all the web element methods are now there for you to use. So for me, I will use get text, and it will print me everything from that whole list. So if I run this now, run as Java application. <clears throat> yeah, Chrome starting, starting. And it's there. And it's all in front of you, right? It printed all of the values, right? As simple as that. So, um, one minute. Yeah. So, any any questions with that portion? How how to work out with web elements? Any question with that? All happy? Yeah, I'll go show it. Okay. All right. So once I have this in place, then what do I do? I'm gonna quickly go back to my uh, week 11, class 11, okay? As a part of that, I have find element on uh, creating a test case. Okay, these are the test cases. I think it has been explained in the video. Let's not go there. I'll go to class 12 because I want to talk about export methods. Okay, these are, the commands to work out with different uh, web elements. I've explained them in the video. These are very simple commands. Driver.get is going to get the URL like you saw. Navigate will Can navigate back. It? Yeah, yeah, go on. Before this class, there was HTTP. So I was having a doubt in that, how to use that. What do you mean? Uh, that. You know, one more, uh, if you go to assignment questions that uh, without navigate.back. Huh. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that URL you have to use that one. That yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't understand the concept, is it? Yeah, sorry for that. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. That's fine. Just a minute. Um, it was week eleven. This one is it? Uh, no. Sorry, not no. here. Week eleven. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Sorry, not class eleven. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I think I have spoken about um, print out. I think the assignment 15 is fine, whatever you have discussed now. Okay. Think so, yeah. If you go down, it's more clear. Shall we go down? Yeah. So all this you have already discussed now. Mm -hmm. Um, indeed page, automate the following, error list. That's fine. Uh, launch any website. Count the numbers. Not this. Not this. I understand what you're talking about. I understand. Launch validate the from footer and print all the links. Verify each thing is active or not. Close the browser. Uh, without navigating back. This one, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, have you uh, have you seen the video? I think I think the video yeah. in the video I have I have shown you right. Yeah. 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 Okay. You have okay. mentioned that in the video. Okay. Okay, so let's try to understand what exactly I'm trying to do with it. Okay, so let me go back to this guy, the rental cars. Rental cars, I have not uh, used any of these links. Let me see. Yeah, it's taking to the Dublin, right? Okay. Okay. Car hire Dublin, or if I say Faro Airport, that will just open up with the Faro Airport, and that's it. Okay, the different version of the same page. So what exactly the test case? The test case is very simple. The test case is saying, how do I know if all these links are not broken? What do you mean by broken? If I click on any of these link, uh, by the way, Arup, uh, is, that, is this a question that you wanted to ask me yesterday? Uh, Shavik, the thing, this question is just immediate uh, top of that. Same question, but uh, with uh, navigate.back. My question was, you know, uh, like these many links are there. If mm -hmm. uh, 32 uh, links are there, mm -hmm. uh, my code is getting break at uh, 12 and index out of bound exception I'm getting. So there where okay. I got stuck, I debugged okay. it, but I still didn't get it, which I'll discuss with you later. That's fine, good. So now, um, what exactly we are trying to do here? How do you know, manually, if I'm asking you to verify if all of these links are not broken that means they are active which means when you click on this it takes you to a web page it is it is refreshing it is taking to a web page how do you idly know that it is it is doing the right job it is taking you to the right page how do you know that if this is the test case that you want to verify or which one you want to work with there are one way that you can do one is you can find the way i found all the elements then you can click on every one of them. You can come back to the previous page and then you can click on the element again. You can keep on doing this one by one by one and then you can see that it is going to the next page or not. That is something that can be done. And I have shown you in the previous, in the, in the video itself for Amazon, how to do it. However, it is not something that you want to do because there are a lot of back and forth movement in the web page that will definitely have some challenges. Uh, it will break and it will have some challenges which can be easily avoided with the help of HTTP request. So what exactly I mean by that? So when I click on, when I click on the network tab and I clear this out, this clear button, if I click or clear it out, all the logs are gone. If I perform a click on the Dublin airport, okay, if I perform a click on the Dublin airport, you see some thing happened. There are a lot of calls happened to open that web page. A lot of calls happened. If I take you to the very top one, 
this is a dub. This is the link that I performed. I clicked on it, right? So you see, rental cars, you see the request URL is rental cars, EN airport, IE dub, right? And then I am performing a method. I'm calling a HTTP method called as get. And the status code of this call that I did is 200, which means green, which means if a link is active and if it's working and you are trying to perform a get method on that, what is get method? So whenever you're performing any kind of operation in the web page, there is at the background of that, of that operation or that action, a HTTP call is being made. A HTTP call is being made. For example, if I just, I'm sorry. Let me share my screen again. So for example, if I take you to uh, HTTP methods, okay? If I take you to any of this guy, HTTP methods tutorial point, okay? You can see these are the common methods that are being used. Oops, sorry. Just, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay, sorry, I had to take that. So what I'm saying is there are HTTP methods that are being performed whenever there is any action that is happening in the web page. Any action, even a scroll that you are doing in the web page when you're doing, there could be a network call that, are, that is being made or a HTTP call that is being made. For example, uh, let, me, let me do something. Let me clear out my logs completely from the network tab. And what I will do is, you see my mouse, I'm just taking it to this particular location. You see that? This particular location in the, in the uh, text box. I didn't click, I didn't do anything, but still there was a call that are being made. If I click on this, you see, I made a call. It's a post call. This is not a get call, it's a post call. Something happened, I don't know. I am not working in this particular company. So I don't know what exactly this call means, but you will definitely understand that something is happening. If I scroll down in this page, you see, there are something is happening. You see, some calls are being made continuously. Some calls are being made. And these are all different calls, which are, which are you see, by just scrolling off it, that's it. Just by the scrolling off it, multiple calls are being made. These calls are, nothing but HTTP call. So have you ever wondered that when you perform a click on a button in the page, when something happens, how it is happening? It's happening because there is a call being made. For example, again, if I am in here, okay, I clear out all my logs. And in this situation, there is no information I have added. I, okay, I have added the information called Dublin Airport and there is some pickup drop, blah, 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 whatever. I will actually do one thing. I will actually clear out everything else. I'll go to the blank rentalcars.com where I don't have any information about my destination or whatsoever, right? Nothing at all. I will just directly go ahead and click on the search button. You see, 
search button over here. I'm clicking on it. As soon as I did a click, I made some crawl. It was a page event and it says c.clicktail.net. I don't know what exactly it is, but there was a get call that was being made. If I look at the response, okay, I'm not getting any response here. Let me look at some other calls. Yeah, I don't see any response here. Um, because nothing actually happened, right? I mean, th there, was no, there was no response really needed for it. But you can see when I performed a get call, when I performed a get call, HTTP call, you can see that I have passed on some information. But what are these information? Yeah, it doesn't give me any information, any, any specific information that is something that I want to really focus on. However, uh, we can we can talk up about, about this later on all these different request headers and parameters which we'll, we will talk about when uh, we talk about api testing right but for now you can understand that there is some call that is being made a get call or a post call or a or or there are calls like uh, put delete uh, options there are multiple different calls over here that you are being made now with respect to that particular test case which uh, Arup is talking about. We are going to make a call that is a call to call like this, which is going to take me to the Dublin, right? The dub call. It is going to be where's the dub call? Come on, man. The dub call. Where is the dub call? Oh, it's, it's not shown here. That portion, that section is not shown here. It is only shown to the primary page. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the section is not shown into a specific, uh, specific um, uh, city page. So if I click on this guy, it is performing a dub call, that's good. And where are you? I can search actually. I can just say dub, dub slash. Yeah, I think that was the call that was being made. Yeah, that's the call that, that, that is being made, right? And it was a get call and then I got this set us as 200. So my motive is this. My motive is I want to perform a HTTP call on, I mean, HTTP get call on each and every link that I just saw there. That is what my motive is. I want to click on each and every link that I saw there in that particular section. And then I want to see whether I'm getting the status code as 200. If I'm getting the status code as 200, it means that the link is active. If it is not 200, then I will be getting something like 400 or 400 plus. Because if you see HTTP error codes, error codes, you will understand if you look at this guy, list of HTTP status code. If you look at this location, so you can see anything between 200 and 400 is considered to be a success response. So you see, these are 200s, all success, basically the one that we were seeing is 200, okay? 200 to 200, 226, and then there is a 300 is for redirection. These are also considered as a positive response or a positive status. However, 400 and 500s are all errors. You see, these are all server errors, and these are all client errors, server errors and client errors, correct? So uh, if I'm getting anything beyond 300, okay, 399, uh, anything less than 400 ideally, then we are good. If anything more than 500, 400, then it is a problem. 
that is the logic that we will be using in order to build this okay let's try to quickly search for something we'll say how to how to verify how to verify a link is working without navigating navigating i'm see i'm i'm exactly going to do what you will be otherwise doing by when you're looking at that particular assignment navigating uh, without navigating using selenium something like this i'm showing you how to google because this is going to be your best friend in programming so how to verify links good i got it from stack overflow uh, what does it say it talks about something something that is not what i'm looking for let me search find all broken links let's try and look at this site uh, okay exactly this is what i'm looking for all right what i'm looking for is something like this i'm looking for uh, i'm looking to use an object called as http url connection and then this guy using this guy i'm going to set the request method i will not set head i will say get set request method get and i'll say dot connect and if i get the response back as 400 and above then i will say the link is broken if it is not then i will say the link is valid that's what i want to do simple stuff but for for this to happen in a loop i need to obviously get the url this url okay the url is basically the http uh, attribute so if i if i take you back to my code not code i mean the application you will see this guy right and in this guy if i if i inspect this dublin then it, this dublin is having the attribute called as href this href is a half href you see that uh no the value is showing right rentalcars.com yeah the value is showing right this is going to be the this is going to be the link that i want to target ideally so what i will do first is i will go back to my code i mean the code that i'm getting and i will simply copy this portion only this much copy I'll take it back to my test case, the test case that was that I was writing. And what I was writing here is I was getting the text. Okay, that's one thing I can do. I will just make some changes. I will say string, uh, say location or just say name of the location. Name is equals to is equals to location dot get text. That's pretty much what I want to do. That's one thing. Second thing I want to do is string uh, URL equals equals location. This is another method, okay? Location dot get attribute because you are getting the attribute of that web element. The attribute that you, we are concerned about is href because if you look at my application where are you man here if you look at my application it is anchor the attribute is href and that has a value so i want to get this value so i'm saying get me the value of href so you can do that using this guy saying get attribute of href okay that gives me the url that's perfectly fine now what i'll do is obviously i want to print the value which is going to be the name or just a location location and i will say plus name right that's going to be my text that's fine on top of that what i want to do is i want to copy this portion one more time here and i will paste it back in this for loop itself that's it okay i'm getting some error perfectly fine it says http new url connection blah 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 i will first import this guy and i will say 
something like this, HUC, and URL is URL, import URL, that's it. Open connection, whatever, response code. Response code is going to be an int response code. Uh, let me, yeah, response code is int, and it is asking me to wrap this up in a, you know, because because there is something called as exception in Java, which I will talk about it later on. So it is asking me to wrap this whole thing into uh, a try catch block. That is, if there is an exception that comes in, the it can be handled gracefully. So what I will do is probably it is not making sense to you right now what is exception is, but what I will do is when, whenever you have something like this unhandled exception type IO exception, just do something like this. Just say add throws declaration. Just click on this for now. And it will it will add a portion or a, or a section like this called throws, whatever, okay? By doing so, my error is gone. It means if an error comes in, if an exception comes in, it will be handled gracefully, okay? That's, that's what it did with the throws part. Anyways, so I'm going to, just remove all my unwanted spaces. I will say HTTP URL connection. I will not say set request method. I will say this as get, okay? And I will see what is the response code I'm going to get, okay? And I'm going to say a simple if else. I'll say if resp code, resp code is greater than 400, greater than equals to 400, then I can print out sys out uh, URL. Let's say something like this URL plus URL. That means the URL string ideally. URL plus is broken. Is is broken. Okay, that's it. And I will actually give the response code also response code. I want to print the response code that exactly what exactly happening. So resp code, that's it. And then I will say else, if that is not the case, that is if it is below 400, then I will say that I'm happy with it and URL is not broken. Simple, URL is not broken. I don't need to give any response code over here because I know that it's going to be always below 400. And I'm happy with that part. Okay, this is my test case. So everyone, is it making sense whatever I just said and I did right now? Is it making sense that what exactly I, I am trying to perform? Without navigating to the link, I'm trying to perform if the link is active. Is this making sense? Yeah, sure. Can you execute this now, please? Right. So I will say run as Java application. <clears throat> okay. And I'm getting for every one of them a response code of four or five. Why is that? It is, it is definitely getting a response code 405. Hmm. Why is that? That is weird. Because the response code, okay, let me try with something, right? I was set request method. I used as get, just a minute. Ah, maybe because of that. Let me try with the head. Just a minute, let me try with the head. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So in this case, I need to use head instead of get. Uh, let me quickly show you the difference between a head and a get. So, so 
same as get, but transfers the status line and header section only. Okay, probably you will not, you will not understand. Uh, let's not dig into it. Uh, you know, I will talk about this in the right time. Uh, but yeah, it, it worked out with get head, it worked out for us. Okay, so uh, that's how that's how you need to really work it out. Is that clear, Arup? Yeah, now sure it's fine. I'll try it from my end now. Thank you. Good, good. So that's pretty much that I wanted to cover up in this section as a part of um, as a part of the next module, which was thirteen. Um, class 12, right? In the class 12, I've spoken about, these are all simple commands, guys, a very, very simple command. I'm talking about get method, navigate to method, navigate back, navigate forward, get current URL. These are very, very simple methods that I've spoken about. And then I've spoken about some XPath access, okay? Uh, this is important. This is very, very important. XPath access, and I will try to explain it to you. I want to see one more thing. We have uh, okay. <clears throat> so we have class 13. Okay, in 13, there's nothing, uh, no no PPT. But what we have is, we have the class 12. In the class 12, I have spoken about export access and also export methods, more or less. So what are export methods and what are export access? Okay, uh, oh, she's here. Okay, so what are export uh, methods? Well, with respect to export, it's just not that you're going to work it out only with the help of double slash and single slash. Um, you can take the help of export methods as well. For example, you want to perform uh, a test case where you want to only click on the links that are named as Dublin, okay? You want to click on only the link in this two section that are named as Dublin. If I want to write an XPath for that, how will I do it? For example, if I just say inspect and I go in here, so I have, where are you? I have Dublin over here. I have Dublin Airport over here. I want to click on these two links only, right? And I want to find an XPath for that, a common XPath that will get me both of these guys. How can I do it? Uh, I'll just say Control F, okay? So I will first and foremost, so I can do it's very simple. So it's a very simple thing to do, okay? I don't have to even inspect it. I can, I can directly do it by dot double slash Starting the search from the top, I'm looking for an anchor. You see there are 130 anchors in the page, not bothered. I'm going to put a bracket. In this, I'm going to say that I'm looking for a keyword. I mean, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to use a method called as contains. I'm going to use a method called as contains. So contains. This is a export method. Inside this contains method, I'm going to pass on, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the text, right? The Dublin is a text. Dublin airport is a text, the link text. So I can say in the contains, I'm looking for a text. So text, and you have to give it as text like this, okay? text and then bracket and then comma. And then you're looking for the text. The portion of the text is Dublin. That's it. You see, I'm looking for an anchor. 
And I am using a method. Let me even increase the font a little bit. You see, I'm saying I'm looking for an anchor. And inside the anchor, I'm looking for a method called as, I'm using a method called as contains. And I'm trying to evaluate the text property of it. And I'm doing that using the text method, text and then two, two brackets. And then I'm looking for Dublin is the keyword that I'm looking for. So with that in mind, I have two of these elements, you see, just like that. Guys, I have to, I have to tell you one thing. I've, I've told, the, told you in the video as well that if you are able to master XPath, your half of your automation problem is gone. Okay. A lot of things can be only handled with XPath. I mean, only handled with your locators. And if you're able to do it, then, you know, it's, it's really, really great. So you see, I just found that guy like so. So I'm using a method called as contains, okay? I can use another method as well because I have something called as St Dublin and Dublin Airport. Both Dublin and Dublin Air, Dublin, I mean, for both the cases, Dublin keyword is in the front of the text. So I can say, Instead of contains, I can say starts with, starts with, um, sorry, starts with, starts with, right? If I say starts with, I again get the same thing. Another way to solve the problem. Contains is means that it can be, it, that Dublin keyword can be there anywhere in the text. Starts with means that starting with that, right? There are different kind of methods I've spoken about. Um, if I go back here. So we have seen text, okay? We have seen uh, contains, okay? All right, how do, you, uh, how do you add multiple attributes to find an element? For example, for example, you have, um, let me find another example. Let me find another example. Maybe I'll, I'll go with the search button. No, I don't have that guy there. Mm. Okay, I have this guy, submit, this button ID, right? I can, I can talk about that. Just presume, presume that I don't have ID uh, as a unique element in the button. Just presume that, okay? I want to use, I want to use both of these attributes called type is submit, and then data test is search box submit button. I want to use both of these attributes. How can I do it? I can do something like this. Let's see. I will say button. I'm looking for a button, right? In the button, I'm looking for, let me inspect again. In the button I'm looking for the type equals submit and data test ID is so-and-so. So I'll just say, I'm looking for at data test equals this guy, okay? And then this gives me, okay, my bad. Uh, the point is that we found the element one of one just like that, okay? But many at times you will see that just by giving one attribute, you're not able to find the element. The, I'm trying to show you how you can add multiple attributes to search the element. So you can just add another square and you can say at type, sorry, at type, at type. And you just see that even if I'm saying at type without even giving the value, even then it is getting considered, you see, because which means, which means it, it is able to find a button in this page that is having a attribute called as type. I'm not even giving the value. I'm just saying the attribute is type. And then the, another attribute is called data test. One attribute is type, another attribute is data test. I am able to see that. So you can see just by giving the attribute even without the value, even then I'm, I'm, I'm considering the same button. However, if I just take this value out, let's see. Yeah, you see, so there is two buttons in this page 
that is having a combination that has that has two of these attributes. One is type and data test. See, I'm not giving the value at all. I just get the attribute names and that's it. I'm able to filter it down to two people, two, two elements. Now, if I just look for it, then obviously my guy is the second guy. I can wrap it up in a bracket and say number two. I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. But you know, I will probably always not do this because it's going to be risky. So giving a value is uh, a even better choice always. Okay, because tomorrow there could be another element in the page that exactly follows the same combination. It has a type and data test, then, then your index number two will not even work because that will be then probably index number two. That will not work. So give a, give a value, but I'm showing you that it's possible. Anyways, that's that. What else? Um, now, I, I want to talk about something called as XPath access. A very, very important concept, guys, without, I mean, so, so the point is that at many times, right, when we are writing XPath, you will see that the target element, the element that you're trying to interact with, you don't have a direct access to that element. You don't have a direct access to that element. For example, um, for example, let me take up this guy. Okay. Let me take up this guy and let me take up this guy. Okay, so there is a, there are two, two, two sections here, right? One is the timing, another one is a date. This is a timing and oh, there's a different section, there's a different div altogether. And, oh, okay, these guys are, you see, uh, okay, you see that? This guy over here, this guy over here, is uh, having pick updates, and this guy over here is having the timing. Okay, so what exactly I'm trying to assume uh, here is that I don't have a direct access. I don't have a direct access to. Yeah. So for example, you, uh, you can presume that you don't have a direct access to this particular div. I'm just asking you to presume that, okay? That there is no direct access to, I mean, here I have got an ID and everything, it's totally fine. But I'm asking you to presume that you don't have a direct access to this, this, this particular div. There's two divs that I have. I don't have an access to it. My motive is something like this. My motive is that okay. Yeah. So my motive is this guys. My motive is I want to take the reference of another element to find my target element. It can be done with XPath access. What do I mean by that? Let me try to draw and show you. So for example, I'm presuming that I don't have direct access to this element. I don't have the direct access to this element. This element is this element, right? I don't have this access, this, this element. I cannot access this direct, directly, per perfectly fine. But I still want to work it out. I want to figure out a way where I can click on this element or I can get some text out of it or whatever, right? So when yeah. you say, uh, you, we, this, does it mean that when I type something and a pop-up pops up and then I can click on that pop-up? Is it something like that? No, I, I didn't get the question. Can you go, go on one more time? So you say, uh, if we don't have direct of any element, 
particular learning. No, no, no. When I'm saying direct access, I mean that this this particular element, this particular element, this particular uh, calendar uh, icon, it doesn't have enough XPath information or enough attributes for okay. me to uniquely find this element. Okay. okay. That is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So if it, it doesn't have enough elements so that I can directly find this element, that is my logic, that is my problem. If I'm not able to find this element uniquely, I will not be able to work it out. However, still I want to write my test case. I still I want to write my test case, and I see I want to I want to somehow uh, you know work it out, right? So in that situation, I can take the help of an additional uh, feature that XPath is offering, and which is XPath access. With the help of that, just give me one minute. So with the, with the help of uh, XPath access, I can take the help of a reference element and I can get my target element. I can take the help of reference element. For example, for example, I have the access to this particular timing, this particular time element. I have enough attributes to find this particular object. That's fine. That means this guy this guy over here, I have the access to it, but I don't have access to this guy. So how can I find it out? I can take the reference of this element and then I can target this guy. You understand? This is the logic behind XPath access, which means taking the reference of any neighboring element to find the target element. Take the help of any neighboring element to find the target element. Why am I saving neighboring element? Obviously, this this guy is just just below this guy, right? So it is my neighboring element. I'm taking the help of this neighboring element to find this element. That's it. How will I do it? I will do it with the help of XPath access. So obviously, first and foremost, I told you that I have direct access to this this element. This, this element over here. So let me clear my drawings and let me try and see what I have. So I have a time field class, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I don't, I don't care. Okay, I have just, I have just this, this guy here, uh, UI layout. Okay, so you see this, this UI layout is basically a strip or a div that contains three divs for different purpose. I don't know why the third div is here, but anyways, I have these two divs that are basically a strip and um, this is basically a strip and it will help me to, uh, it will help me to uh, first and foremost identify, I will first and foremost identify this element. So I, I am concerned about the C time field let me see, ah, okay, 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 you see. My motive is, understand this, right? My motive is to take the help of this guy to find out this guy, not, and not to, not to get confused with this one and this one, right? I really want to focus on only, I want to really focus on only this particular elements in the page right now. How can I do it? So what I will do is I will look for something unique in my for, for my reference element, right? So what is my reference element? My reference element is idly this guy. Okay. You see, you see I have UI layout. You see I have UI layout. Okay. And I have UI layout again. I have two UI layouts. So these are there is nothing unique over here, right? But if I just go down a little bit, I can see something that is really, really lucrative for me. What is that? It is saying ID pickup time. So I have a select that has an ID pickup time. I told you IDs are going to be unique. So fine. I will, I will try with the select first. This is going to be really, really interesting. So look at the select at ID equals, what is that? Pick up time. So this is my guy here. OK, 
Okay, and that 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 that, that is how I got my element, which is my this element. However, this is a select guy. Okay, from this guy, I have to somehow figure it out that how can I really target this element? How can I target this element? Okay, so as soon as I want to target this element, you have to understand some structure over here, right? So you see this div, the div right now that I'm highlighting, uh, let me draw it. This div over here and this div over here, they are what? They are, uh, sorry, my bad. This one, yeah, this one and this one, right? This one and this one. So this one and this one are what? They are next to each other, or I can say they are sibling. So this element and this element are sibling to each other. I can say that, right? I have already found a unique element in one of my sibling, which is my select. I've already found that. So somehow, if I can, if I can jump, if I can jump from my select to this div, which is going to be, which is going to be a great grandparent of this select element, this guy over here, right? If I can somehow jump from here to here, then I will come to my sibling, a direct sibling of this element, right? A direct sibling of this element, right? So let's first try and do that. Let's first try and jump from the select to the UI layout, okay? The ancestor. How can I do it? I can very easily do it with the help of my XPath access. Ancestor. Yeah, we will use ancestor. Perfect, perfect, right? How can I use ancestor? I will just say, just a minute. So I will just say slash ancestor, ancestor, colon, colon. Okay. And I will, I'm looking for a div. I'm looking for a div that has a class, that has a class, uh, add class, add class equals UI layout, UI layout isn't it did i not jump from select to the uh, ancestor i did and that's one of one perfectly fine so in in one example itself i will show you the whole ancestor game the whole ancestor game i can finish it off in one one example itself so i can i just showed you ancestor which took me to this guy right perfectly fine now, what I have to do, I have to go from here, from here to here, right? That is my sibling, a sibling which is above me. If it is above me, I can use a sibling. I can use an ancestor, or I can use a um, access, export access called as preceding sibling. What will I do? I will simply say slash, okay? Preceding sibling, sibling, colon, colon. I'm looking for a div. And how many divs I have? Look at this. As soon as I have said preceding sibling div, I saw one, two, three of those divs. That is before UI layout. And that's why I said one of three. I have to want to make it unique. How can I make it unique? I can make it, I can make it unique with the help of add class or yeah, I can say add class. Add class equals a unique value, which is this guy. And I found this element and that's where you see, I shifted completely from UI layout, you see, I've shifted completely my focus from the UI layout to my 
target node. Once I have in the target node, then I can make my way in to this element, which is going to be my, this guy over here, correct? How can I do that? Let's look at it. So I can then quickly go to the very bottom end of it. And then I can say, I'm looking for a, let's look at this, it's a div, um, let me see what is that I can use. I can use a div. I can use a div or I can use a, I can use a label, for example, just say label start date or let me see background white div body. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get that text, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. I'm, I'm trying to get the input. I'm trying to get an input type equals text. That's it, right? This, uh, uh, this is the value I'm trying to look for, okay? What I'll do is I'll just go down there and I'm straight up looking for an input. Input, and that's it. How cool is that? Are you understanding it? I took a complete different guy, which is my neighboring element, found its ancestor, then found its preceding sibling, and then make my way in to the input element. Are you, are you, but why are we doing that? If our target is directly input, we can directly write text path for the input. I am, I am asking you to presume the situation that you do not have a direct element or you do not have enough, enough X path attribute to, to, to directly identify the element. Because many at times when you actually start working in the company, you will, you will face this kind of situation where you are you are asked to interact with a particular element in the page, but you don't have enough XPath or you don't have enough tag and attribute to come to that element. That's where you take the help of any neighboring element to find that element. I'm asking you to presume the situation. Okay, so that is the only condition when we are going to use this access method, is it? Yeah, access strategy, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, the idea is very simple. The idea is that you want to take the help of a neighboring, uh, let me draw this. So what I have written is something like this. Right now, the one that I've written is something like this. Okay, I, I just showed you, showed all the concept of expo, I mean, access in one single strategy itself ancestor and preceding sibling and all those stuff. So preceding sibling is used for a sibling which is above the current node. If it is a if it's a, a sibling which is below the current node, then I will use a following sibling. So you see, this was my this was my uh, reference element. So this was my reference element. From there, I I, I moved into the uh, ancestor, which is my which, which was my you know. Uh, ancestor of the reference element. From there, I did a preceding sibling to go to my preceding sibling of the ancestor of the reference element. And from the preceding sibling, I made my way into my input, which is my target element. I will only do this in a situation where I don't have direct access to the target element. And you will find one or two situations, you will, not, you will not find this every time, but you will find this kind of situation few, few, few many times where you have to take the help of a neighboring element to find the target element. That's where your access is very, very much important. Is this clear to everyone? So Vic, just a question. Can we yeah. not use um, um, indexing in between that preceding sibling? Other than no, no, the whole... no uh, I am asking you to avoid indexing. I mean, I'm asking you to avoid indexing because as I said earlier, right? I mean, if, a, if another element comes in between that your index number is going to be simply changed, right? Yeah. And that, that's what the problem will be. Right, okay, makes sense. Thanks. So you know whatever whatever I did right now is it is it making sense that how I took the help of a reference element and I made my way into the 
uh, target element. Is, is, is this understandable? Yes. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Good, good. All right. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover up today. Um, uh, so Vic, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Could you go over how to rectify um, CT suggestions um, from um, Postal World? Okay. Because um, the, um, web, the web page is changed. Yeah, I know. I know. And, the um, web page is changing. Yeah, I know. Uh, hostelworld.com. Hostelworld. Okay, Hostelworld. Yeah, tell me. What's the problem? Okay. So if you okay. go into where do you want to go and type in Paris. Okay. And Paris. then you want to verify, you want to verify um, the suggestions. Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you, you write the, um, how would you write the um, SPAT for that? Because I was trying to write the SPAT and I kept getting error. You are trying to write the XPath for which particular component? For the text box for, over here? For the or suggestions, for the suggestions. For the suggestions, okay. Are you able to come, are you able to come to a level where you are able to click on the, uh, I mean, you're able to search for Paris? Search for Paris, yeah. Okay, okay, then, then, then that's a good progress. So what I'll say is um, I'll go down to this element, okay. Now let's try and inspect the element. What do I have? So this is my, okay. So you have UL, as soon as you hit the, as soon as you hit Paris, Paris, as soon as you hit Paris, you're getting this element over here and if I just cover this up. So let me just look at the solution first. So your solutions are coming up in a list LI tag. All of these guys are coming in a LI tag, as you can see. And that's totally fine. Cities, there's a UL, okay? And then there is a ID called as predicted search results. Have you tried with that? Yep. yep. Okay. Um, slash slash ul at yeah. um, id equals to predicted search results yeah so but, no. so ul at id equals predicted search results and that's that it's, it's showing up properly and double slash li's these are going to give me all the li's that are just not the LIs you need. You need to ideally get the solutions. So you are looking for an LI that has a div and then the div is having a label, something like that. So you're gonna say, you're looking for an LI with a div and that has a label as an attribute or, 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 or a label, a class as label, right? So at class equals label. Idly, that is going to be your export. And these are all your 17 solutions coming out of it. You can see, I can, I can just brush through all of them. Yeah. So that is going to be your, have you, have you tried with this export? I didn't, I didn't get to that point. I only got to your um, LI. Okay, no problem. So I can just uh, ping you there in the chat right now. Please. And uh, you can then use that. I, I'll put it in the Slack channel ideally. Oh, thank you. Slack. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. So you can then uh, um, use this and then let me know if that works. Oh, uh, but always uh, make sure that when you are writing, um, you know, the test case, you're performing an action. For example, guys, uh, you have to always understand something uh, that is, you have a button, for example you have a button like this. You are performing a click on this and that will, that will take you to another page. That will take you to another page. In that page, you are supposed to perform some actions. 
in that new page, you're supposed to perform some action. So when you click on this button and you are navigated to the next page, there is a possibility that your test case will fail right now because you are not really handling the sync mechanism. Sync means between, between the click of the button and landing into the page, right? You somehow have to provide some, you know, breathing time for your Java code because you have to understand something that is your Java code is working out separately. I mean, it is it is running running on its own, and your application is running on its own. There is no connection between your Java code and your application. There is no connection between those two guys. Right? So if your application is running a little slow, then your Java code will actually be not waiting for the application. I will show you how to wait it for wait for the application when the right time comes, when I talk about the uh, wait mechanism, I will talk about that. But until then, you need to provide some gap. How do you provide a gap between these kind of actions? You just use thread.sleep for now you're gonna use thread.sleep. And I, I have explained that in the video, I am damn sure about that. Just give some thread.sleep of two seconds or three seconds, 2000 milliseconds means two seconds. And if you do that, then you are actually giving some breathing time for your application. And then you are going to the next page and then you are performing the other operation, right? So that's how you, you should, you should, you should uh, take care of your navigation things, yeah? All right, so that's pretty much about it. I'm gonna just upload the um, uh, assignments and uh, take a look, at, look into it. I will also enable week five for, for everyone uh, who has confirmed that they will be staying back with me. And uh, uh, then I will uh, see you guys on 31st of, of October 31st, 24th, there is no class. 31st is going to be the next class. So 31st, I'm going to, I'm going to meet you guys again. In the meantime, if you have a problem, you are absolutely feeling, I mean, you can, you can just drop a message or book a call and then uh, we can chat about it. Uh, so big, um, yeah. so 24, there's no class, so I didn't know. Mm. No, no, no. You were not there, Swasini. I think when okay. when I was talking about it, it your 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 audio was uh, breaking up. So yeah, uh, twenty four. There is no class. I'm taking a break after a long time. So I'm I'm actually not giving any class on twenty fourth and twenty fifth. Twenty fifth also is I have a batch okay. uh, that runs on Sundays, and I don't have a class on on twenty fourth and twenty fifth. Uh, my next class will be starting again on 31st and um, yeah so just letting you know so i will be enabling week five uh, actually i'm I have taken off from my office as well from 22nd i've taken off till 26th i'm joining back on 27 for them and uh, i'm not going anywhere so if you have if you have any questions for me you can anyways drop a message in the slack and I will reply you back or Gagan will reply you back. So don't don't worry about those part. But uh, I will not have a class on 24th. So the next break will be on Christmas. You mean? Yeah, the next break is on Christmas, yeah. Okay. 26, 26th of. 26th there will be, there will be a break. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to upload the video. I'm going to upload the um, solutions. I will enable you guys with the week uh, five and uh, meet you back on 31st. Thank you. I uh, just have a doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to enable week five and then after that, week six will be enabled on second? No, 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 no. It, it is all controlled by me, right? Okay. So you uh, I, I control it. So th th 31st, I will be talking about week five. Okay. 31st, I will be coming back and talking about week five, and then I will enable week six. Okay. And, until we finish week five, I'm not going to go to week six. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
helpful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. a great week ahead. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye.